are you able to see my screen in front of you okay thank you matthew and francis thank you darshan Okay, so today we are finishing our process accident models. These are the last uh, three models uh, that we need to work on. Swiss cheese model, Kuja model, and uh, three models. First two, Swiss cheese model. In these uh, three models, first two models, uh, Swiss cheese model and Kuja model, they are very conceptual models. And this is what uh, it has some mathematical calculations that I would like you to do with me as we reach on this point. I will explain you uh, basic uh, concept in a Swiss cheese model. It was presented by Reason. So, the basic concept in a Swiss cheese uh, model is that the accident happens. This is my accident from a safe condition. This is my safe. If you recall our accident precursor diagram, we went from safe to the accident. When too many barriers fail to stop that uh, happening. By that, I mean to say, this is my barrier first. This is my second barrier. This is my third barrier. And this is my fourth barrier. So the accident uh, will happen if all these barriers are failed. As you can see, they lined up, which allow the failure of one component and the second and the third, and then the accident happens. However, at any given time or the point, if we are able to apply a barrier, which can stop that uh, passage, then we can avoid our accident. That's a very simple explanation on a Swiss cheese model. This is uh, in a bit more uh, details. As you can see here, this is my organization influences, unsafe supervision, T conditions for unsafe acts and the unsafe acts. As you can see, all of them went fail, which causes to have an accident occur. Okay. This is your accident here. Some events could be latent uh, failures or some of them could be active failures. Most of time uh, you will see when the people draw the Swiss cheese model, there are uh, management and organizations failure involved in it. This is another representation of a Swiss cheese model. The defensive barriers are like uh, dynamic slices against the accident and incident with the holes constantly subjected to change in size and location. When they line up, meaning that all the defenses fail and a system's latent vulnerabilities are exposed, then the accident occurs. So it is important that uh, those barriers uh, should be lined up and the, the failure of them will cause the accident. A significant attribute of the reasons model is that each of the contributing factors is seen as necessary, but not sufficient on its own to cause the occurrence of an accident.
folks our second model is uh, kuja model it is applied on offshore oil and gas uh, processing the accident related to hydrocarbon release scenarios and any escalating events that follow the elements to prevent the hydrocarbon release accident scenarios are identified and used in conceptual model to depict the accident progression The proposed accident model elements are presented as safety barriers, which I will show you in next slide. Again, these two, uh, Swiss cheese and Kuja, they are very conceptual models. There are nothing, uh, there are no calculations that you can work on it. I will provide you some study material, but the basic concept is what uh, I explained to you. And for Kuja models, this is uh, the actual models from their work. So we have the release prevention barrier, we have the ignition prevention barrier, escalation prevention barrier, arm prevention barrier, and loss prevention barrier. So if you recall in our very first lecture, we have the initiation. It is the start of the event. Then we have the progression. It moves from safe point. This is my safe point here to an accident this is what the accident happened here. and the last uh, step was the termination so initiation progression and termination so if i give you a very simple example by release prevention barrier for example there was a fuel which was released and it uh, fail the release prevention barrier is failed because the release has happened it find an ignition source so the barrier of the ignition prevention has been failed as well it uh, the fire started because it has find an ignition source if you recall your fire triangle so the escalation will happen and this escalation of the fire it will cause harm we are filling all the barriers and then we get the, our loss here. So starting from initiation up to the termination, there is a progression. An accident has been described as one or more barriers that have failed rather than causal factors. So it is a failure of the barrier. The model is available to provide qualitative description of accident processes. Again, by qualitative, it means to say there is, there is no mathematical numbers that we can associate with this, but it is a qualitative description of the accident process. Folks, this is the work that you need to study to learn more about this. Our conceptual of your oil and gas process accident model. I will make that available on uh, uh, d12 for you so you don't have to find them it will explain uh, the accident of 2005 accidents of the bp texas in details and then it try to apply this model on that accident this is uh, our important uh, work uh, for today which is called as the ship model system has a identification and predi prediction and prevention model in this model, the accidents are the events which results from a series of failure or errors. That is, the accidents cannot be described by using a single cause. The causal relationship of the accident process is represented by a causal chain or network. The accident sequential path can be blocked by applying suitable barriers. In doing so, the severity of undesired consequences can be prevented, controlled, or mitigated. I will also, when we go on the next slides, I will also explain how we are controlling and mitigating these things. In ship model, the release of the material or energy and or processor upsets are considered as initiating events. The performance uh, failure or success of a safety function determines the progression of accident process. 
that is the accident is described as one or more barriers that have failed this thing i mentioned you previously the management and organizational and human elements are influenced during all stage of accident process therefore these two factors are considered as a common influencing factors Books, this is the diagram for our ship model. We have the release uh, prevention barrier. Now we have dispersion prevention barrier in it and ignition prevention barrier, escalation prevention barrier, damage control and emergency management barriers. So failure of all these will lead to uh, unsafe event which is uh, an accident from a safe event to a catastrophic accident again this is your uh, normal event which is the initiation it is a progressions from here to this point and then you have your termination because terminations will there will be a catastrophic accident here the human factor and the management factors they are common in all of these uh, barriers. I will explain in mathematical terms how we convert this uh, into a mathematical terms. So this model is uh, using a combination of event and the fall tree concept. This was the reason I decided to have your last lecture on these two concepts to describe the cause uh, consequence relationships the model relies on process history we will have some historical data from our uh, process system which we can use accident precursor information accident precursor means how many safe events were there how many near miss were there how many mishaps were there how many incidents were there how many accidents were there that's what the accident precursor data is and accident causation model the model can capture the process operational behavior and update the accident likelihood this is one of uh, the important uh, concept in this model that uh, we are able to update our accident likelihood and the method they used is the bayesian updating mechanism I will explain you in my next couple of slides what is the Bayesian updating mechanism. The predictive abilities of the model along with the risk estimation help to develop and prioritize inherently safer design and operational strategies. Folks, a Bayesian network uh, uh, is also called as a belief network. Uh, it is a probabilistic uh, network uh, which is a relatively very new concept uh, for reasoning complex uncertain problems where the network means a graphical model it uses the qualitative uh, assumptions about cause effect relationship uh, to drive causal inferences from a combination of diverse assumptions so what is uh, the advantage of using the Bayesian network, it can help to incorporate new observations or evidences. This is also called evidence technically in the network and to predict the influence of possible future observations onto the results obtained. In the Bayesian network model, we use uh, a theorem which we call as a Bayes theorem. This is uh, our Bayes theorem. H is our hypothesis and E is our evidence. So this P is the probability. So it is the probability a hypothesis is true given the evidences. P of H in this Bayes theorem, it is what we call as the probability a hypothesis is true before the evidence is present. Okay. So the difference between these two terms is this is based on the evidence as the new information becomes available and this is before the evidence is present this term probability of e 
given by H is the probability of seeing the evidence if the hypothesis is true. And the term here, probability of E, is the probability of observing an evidence. What is the basic uh, concept that uh, in Bayes' theorem that you apply to update uh, is that uh, you have your prior probability or which is called as the initial belief. Then you look for your new evidences. Once you have your new evidences, then you apply the Bayes' theorem and then you find out a probability which is called as a posterior probability. This posterior probability is what is your updated belief. A very simple example. For example, you wake up today and you have not uh, seen any weather forecast. You were uh, assuming there will be, there is no need of the umbrella to take out. By the time you open the door, you feel that, uh, no, there are clouds. So there is a possibility that uh, I might, there might be a rain and I will need an umbrella. Now, looking at the clouds, you have some new evidences that there might be a rain. So you, you decided to take your umbrella with you. So that's what is your updated belief now. So this is my initial belief. From initial belief to my updated belief, I came here using some new evidence. And in my rough example, what is my new evidence? Presence of clouds. Now this term here, probability of E, which is the observing uh, probability of observing the evidence, this is uh, used is in its extended form like this. So this is the probability of H times uh, probability of E given by H plus probability of uh, complementary functions of H. So let me allow to write here your probability of H for two events and the probability of your complementary events, they should add up equals to one. Because some of all the probabilities of the, an event will be equals to one. So this is essentially what it is presenting here. This is the probability for H and uh, this term is uh, indicating the probability of a complementary function of h we will be using this uh, in our calculations today folks i'm going to start some steps here and the explanations in shift methodology as i mentioned there are five, uh, four barriers here, which is the release uh, prevention barrier, dispersion prevention barrier, ignition prevention barrier, and escalation prevention barrier. So the normal operation starts from here. It went to the release prevention barrier. If it is a success, we will get our outcome will be a safe event. If the release uh, prevention barrier is failed, then it will go to a dispersion prevention barrier. So let's uh, take an example of uh, fuel, fuels, uh, oil spill, let's say. So the oil is, uh, hydrocarbon oil is uh, released. So if we are successful, it will not be able, to, it will not be able to release and it's a safe event. However, if the oil is released, that's the failure. Because uh, we still have the oil spill, so there is always uh, a chances that uh, we can have some near misses. So if the dispersion prevention barrier is a success, it will be a near miss. However, if the dispersion prevention barrier is a failure, it will go to our next barrier, which is to prevent the ignition. If we are able to have success in this barrier, it will be a mishap. However, if the ignition prevention barrier fails, it can catch the fire. And this will lead to our next barrier, which is the escalation prevention barrier. If it is success, it will still be an incident. Someone can get injured or there might be loss of the property. However, we are, if we are not able to stop it or this barrier is failed, 
that's where it could lead to a accident okay so we have the conditions here the failure of the release prevention is the safe event dispersion is the near miss ignition is the mishap escalation prevention success gives an accident and its failure will provide a accident this uh, event tree is the same if you want to write it uh, like this let's say release prevention barrier dispersion prevention barrier and ignition prevention barrier escalation prevention barrier so i start from my normal operation so my first barrier is coming here which is the release prevention barrier so i'm going on the top which is the success and this is my failure here so if the release prevention barrier is, is successful i don't need to go to my next barriers and my final outcome will be a safe event however if there is a failure i will go to my next uh, barrier which is my dispersion prevention barrier so again there could be two possibilities for this barrier here it could be the success which is going on the top and the failure which is going at the bottom if this is a success the outcome will be a near miss and i don't need to go to my other barriers because this barrier has already been successful in order to stop the dispersion in case of the failure of the dispersion barrier i will go to my next barrier which is the ignition prevention barrier again there could be two possibilities in inventory one could be the success going top and bottom could be a failure if the ignition prevention barrier is a success then it will be a mishap still it will not be safe conditions because uh, there is a possibility that it can catch the fire however the failure of my ignition prevention barrier will lead to my next uh, barrier which is the escalation prevention barrier so again there could be two possibilities one is the success and it could be a failure if the escalation prevention barrier is a success i will get an incident however the failure of this barrier will lead to some catastrophic event which we define as an accident okay so either you draw your inventory in this way or this way both of them are same so we have release prevention barrier dispersion prevention ignition prevention and escalation prevention barrier in the next step we develop the fault trees based on our barriers so this is the failure uh, fault tree for the release prevention barrier that they developed i'm not going into the details how they develop it because we already spent some time you can read that and you will be able to understand it this is the fault tree using the dispersion prevention barriers if i provide you probabilities for these basic events all these are the basic events and you know that either he is using an or gate or he is using an or gate here and gate here sorry so you can easily calculate the probabilities of your top event the same should be rule here if you have the probabilities of your basic events then using the definitions of your or gates and 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 gate you can find out your probability of your top event so this is what uh, they have done they have the probabilities of the basic events i'm not going into details how they calculated it from fall tree because we already did it last time so they calculated the probabilities of the release prevention barriers dispersion prevention barriers ignition prevention barriers and escalation prevention barriers the next step here is to calculate uh, the occurrence probabilities of the consequences how much are the safe events here how much are the near misses how much are the mishaps 
what is the probability of your incident what is the probability of your accident this one is coming from inventory and i want you to do it with me how do we find okay we have the question here how do we find the probabilities of the basic events these comes from the industrial data you don't find the probabilities of the basic events here Folks, I'm going to do this. I want you to do it, uh, please, with me so that it will make some sense to you rather than I just keep talking and doing it. So what is my objective here? I want to work on the event tree in order to find out the probabilities of my safe uh, event, uh, near miss, uh, mishap, incident, and accident. The first thing that I need to draw is the event tree, uh, event tree here. So let's uh, start with the same event tree which I just explained you. So we have my first barrier, which is the release prevention barrier. The second uh, is the dispersion prevention barrier. The third one is my ignition prevention barrier. And the last one is my escalation prevention barrier so i start with my initiating event the same explanation as i was doing before but because i want to do some mathematical calculations and i want to show you how we work on the event tree i did share its uh, material last time but i'm pretty confident no one have you read that material so it is best if i do it here so we have the release prevention barrier. So this is my initiating event. So there could be two possibilities with the event tree. One could be the success here. It is going top. And it could be a failure. If it is a success, so this one will lead to an outcome. I don't, if this is release prevention barrier is a failure, I don't need to go into the, these uh, barriers. I don't need these barriers because already this barrier has been successful. So the outcome of this event will be a safe event. My objective here is to find out what is its probability of safe. In case of the failure of the release prevention barrier, this will go to your next barrier, which is my dispersion prevention barrier. So it will be, there could be again two possibilities. One could be the safe event and another could be a failure. Folks, are you able to hear me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we were okay. So we have the success of the dispersion prevention barrier because this is a success. We don't need to go to our next barrier or the next barrier, and then the outcome will be a near miss. It is still not a safe event because your fuel has been dispersed. It can catch fire anytime. So this is my near miss. What is my objective here? I want to find out its probability using the event tree. In the dispersion barrier, in the dispersion, if it is a failure here, then it will lead to my next barrier, which is the ignition prevention barrier. So again, there could be two possibilities. One is the success going on the top and the failure is going on the bottom. If ignition prevention barrier is a success and then it will lead to a mishap. I don't need to go to my escalation prevention barrier because ignition prevention barrier was able to stop uh, that fuel to get fire. However, this event still a mishap. If the ignition prevention barrier is a failure, then I definitely need to have my 
last barrier in place, which is the escalation prevention barrier. However, at this point, because the fuel has catched the fire, again, there could be two possibilities, success and the failure of this barrier. The fuel has catched the fire. It will not be a safe near miss or mishap. I will classify it as an, an incident. Incident. And the failure of this one will definitely lead to an accident. Folks, is there anyone here who is not clear how I developed this uh, event tree? Right. Now allow me to choose a different color. These uh, probabilities for uh, these uh, probabilities of the release uh, prevention barrier, dispersion prevention barrier, ignition prevention barrier, and escalation prevention barriers, these are coming from our fall tree. I'm just going to write down what probabilities uh, they have over here. It is uh, 0 0.04. Four nine eight. This is the failure probability of release prevention barrier. For dispersion prevention barrier, value of our failure probability is uh, zero point zero six one two. For ignition prevention barrier, our failure probability is uh, zero point one zero six zero. And for the last barrier escalation prevention uh, barrier our failure probability is uh, 0 0.0290 these are the failure probabilities how they are coming they are coming from the fault tree analysis my objective here is to find out the probabilities associated with all of these Let's start uh, from the very first one. As I mentioned, this uh, value 0 0.0498, this is the failure probability of your release prevention barrier. So what I can say that this is the probability which lies here. This is my failure, right? So this is my probability of the failure, probability of the failure. This is equals to 0 0.0498. If there are two events here, one is the failure, other is the success. If I want to find out the probability of my other event, what I will do? This uh, probability of success, that will be equals to 1 minus this probability, which is 0 0.0498. Folks, is that clear what I have done here? I will repeat one more time. So let's write it down here even. So the probability of your uh, failure plus the probability of your success because it's only two events here in the event tree. They, both of them should add up to one. Why I did not write uh, this value over here on the success? because this is the probability of my failure not the success so this goes here with the failure and i subtract one to find out my probability of success now once you calculate this you will find out it is uh, 0 0.9 thank you Ashish. your calculator is much better than mine maybe 0.9502 now, if you look at, this is my probability of the success uh, over here. This is what is leading me to my safe event. So probability of my safe event will be 0 0.9502. Am I clear? 
So one more time, we have the success uh, probability for release prevention barrier, and that's what will uh, be the probability of my safe event, which is 0.9502. It's the same value as we are getting here. Let's move to the next one. This uh, probability of the failure, 0 0.0612, is associated with here, which is 0 0.0612. If I want to find out uh, this one, what I will do, I will just uh, subtract uh, it from 1. The same principle that we are using here. This value, you get it is that clear how I get uh, this uh, success probability so we have the failure probability from our barrier which is 0 0.0612 and the success uh, probability is uh, 1 minus 0 0.0612 which gives you 0 0.9388 in order to calculate this uh, near miss this probability needs to be multiplied by this probability so if I want to find out this probability this will be the product of 0 0.9388 multiplied by 0 0.0498 this one and then you get your answer which is 0. 0467 a very simple thing uh, to remember this is if you are looking to find out the probabilities over here let me use a different color for a better explanation maybe so if you want to find out the probability of this event what you need to do you start from here you keep going and you need to move towards your initi initiating events probability. So any probability value coming over here, they need to get multiplied. In this particular case, in our example, initiating event probability is one. Whatever probability is here, that if it is, let's say 0.1, you need to multiply this value with 0.1 as well. However, it is only one at this point. So the basic simple idea is if you want to find out the probability of this event then you just keep going back and multiply whatever probabilities you are getting until you reach your initiating event. Now the same will be true for the rest of the event tree. Let me use a different color. So for example if I want to find out the probability of the mishap so I will start from here. I will keep going. There will be one probability which will come here. We will do it, of course. And then I multiply this probability value with this value, and then it will be multiplied by this value until I reach my initiating event. Is that clear, folks? Okay, let's do it for the next one. So in my next barrier was ignition prevention barrier. What is the failure probability for this? It is uh, 0 0.1060. How I, how I can find the probability of my success here? It will be one minus 0 0.1060. This is zero. So you will get uh, the answer of uh, it is uh, 0 0.984 okay now if i want to find out what is my probability of uh, mishap what I, I should do just follow this yellow line here so i will multiply it my 0 0.984 with 0 0.0612 keep going 0 0.0498 up to your one so allow me to write it here because it will be 
complex on this. So probability of my mishap will be. So what is uh, my first coming here, which is uh, 0 0.894 multiplied by. So the next I'm going here, I find out uh, it is uh, 0 0.0612. This is 0 multiplied by then i keep going here i find out uh, it the next value will be 0 0.0498 and the probability of your initiating event which is one here so the final answer that you will get it uh, it is 0 Did I calculate it wrong? Folks, can you calculate it again or? It is correct. Okay, thank you, Yogesh. Right, so that is your probability of your mishap. Now let's come to the next event in the event tree. This is your escalation prevention barrier probability failure which is 0 0.0290. So this is my failure probability, which is 0 0.0290. So what will be the probability of my another event, success event, it will be zero minus one minus 0 0.0290. And it turns out to be 0 0.971. Okay, so this is my incident uh, probability, success probability for the barrier, not the incident probability, sorry. And this is my failure probability of the accident. Now, if I want to calculate it uh, for my incident, what numbers I should multiply, sir? So let's use this color. So from incident, I will start from here. And this is my first probability coming here. Then I look for my next value, which is this one, until I keep uh, going, until I reach my initiating events. So that's what is your incident probability. So probability of your incident, that will be equals to. So my first value coming is the 0.971 multiplied by 0 0.1060 multiplied by 0 0.0612 multiplied by 0 0.0498 and multiplied by 1 which does not matter because uh, it's only 1 here so probability that we get is it is uh, 0 0.00 Zero three one three six. Folks, is that right? Okay, thank you. Now the last uh, one probability that I need to find out is for the accident. Oh, sorry. So in order to find the probability of uh, the accident, so the probability of my accident here, so accident probability is point, uh, the failure probability of this barrier is 0 0.0290. So in order to find this probability, I will just start from here and reach up to my initiating event. So this will be 0 0.0. 290. I'm starting from here. Multiplied by 0 0.1060. Multiplied by 0 0.0612. Multiplied by 0 0.0498. Multiplied by 1. So this will be your probability of the accident which to my calculation is 9.3 into 
10 raised to power minus 6. Folks, is that clear how we develop this inventory, how we perform these calculations in inventory? All this uh, is available in the material which I, I have already shared with you in our last lecture. Okay, good. Now let me move to the next uh, work. The next step uh, is the predictive modeling. The predictive probability of observing abnormal event for the next time interval for the given data is estimated using this formula. Folks, it is a big mistake in this formula. This was directly adopted from the work, which I will share you to study at home. You need to use the negative sign here. Otherwise, you will get a very big number of the probability, more than one, which will be wrong. So once you receive your material, even the uh, even the actual uh, published uh, work of this uh, model, there's a typo, I would say. There should be a negative with this one. So please make sure you use this negative sign on the top of E. So this one should be E power negative of uh, lambda. Otherwise, you will get a very big number of the probability, which will wrong, of course. So how do we find the predictive probability of abnormal event for the next time interval? This is my formula here. Here the probability of the y t plus 1 is a next t, t plus 1 is a next time interval given the data information. This is the number of the abnormal events. If you want to find out uh, the lambda, which is the rate of the abnormal events, we need to you have the values of uh, your number of the abnormal events on the plot or the total number of the abnormal events in the time interval n i will do these calculations uh, with you in the next slides the value of the alpha and beta these are the gamma distribution which you can take as 0 0.001 let's do these calculations folks this is the data accidental precursor data that i was referring you so these are number of the safe events, number of the near misses, number of the mishap, number of the incident, number of the accident. This is the real data which is coming from the industry. How do you read this? In the first month, I have six safe events, five near miss, three mishap, one incident, and there was no accident. In the second month, I have 10 safe events, uh, 12 near miss, five mishap, one incident, zero accident, and so on. How many number of the periods of the data we have? We have the 10 months uh, data available. We want to find out the probability of the 11th month, which will be a predictive probability. The total number of the abnormal event in the time interval will be. One thing you must uh, notice here, this 10 value includes uh, this six already. So how many safe events actually happen on month two? There will be four. Because four plus six will give you a value of 10. Similarly, at this 12 includes uh, this five. Allow me to take some other value. Let's say 27. This 27 on, in the month seven, this 27 number, which is the mishap, it does include this uh, 25. So this means there were only two mishaps in seventh month. By that I mean to say this is a cumulative uh, number of abnormal events data that you use. It will help us uh, to find out the total number of the abnormal events in the time interval. So this 57 is uh, 54 sorry this 54 is the total number of my save events. This 116 are the total number of my near miss in 10, month 10. 30 number here, it gives me the mishaps, total mishaps in month 10. And these are total incident and total accident occurs too. 
If I add up all these uh, numbers here, then you can find out uh, 220 abnormal events occur. Okay. So keep in mind, if you receive this uh, table in the actual data without the cumulative, you need to convert them into cumulative number of abnormal events. And this is what we are using here. These are values of your alpha plus your number of the abnormal events. This is coming from here. This is what I'm using in the next slide. Over the beta value, and then you have your 10, which is the month, 10 months, 22. Once you plug this into your value, uh, into this formula here, you will find out your probability for predictive probability for your event. Folks, we have the next step where we updating our mechanism, we use our BN model. This is the uh, base theorem, which I just uh, shared with you in my previous slides. So this value, probability of the YI given that data is what we are, have the posterior failure probability. And this uh, data here is the likelihood failure probability. And this probability of the YI is my prior probability. So based on our given evidence, we will update this information and we will try to find out what is our posterior failure probability. Folks, I want you to do these calculations with me as well. Let's see. So we have, uh, if you allow me to go back here, in my first month, I have six uh, safe events. I have five near miss. I have three mishap, one incident, and there was no accident. So in order to find out uh, the likelihood probability for each uh, safety barriers, what I'm going to do, this is my safe events, which are six. And what are uh, my other events? The failure events will be 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 0. So 6 are my safe events. And then we have uh, the 5, which is uh, your near miss. This is the mishap. Three mishaps happen on first month. And then there was one incident and there was zero accident. So you total abnormal events here are coming out to be a 9. So probability of my data probability of my data given y i that is equals to what is my failures here which is 9 over the sum of both which is 9 plus 6 and this is going to give you your 0 0.6 so that what is the probability of your first likelihood probability of your first barrier which is the release prevention barrier Folks, am I clear on this? Let me write it down again. So we have six safe events. We have uh, five near misses. And then we have uh, mishap three. We had incident as one. We have accident. There was no accident. This is the data for my first year. Okay. This data is for my first, uh, sorry, first month. The reason I'm writing it because I need to explain you how we reach to this point. So once you have calculated uh, this 0.6 uh, probability or the likelihood for your first uh, barrier, now for the next one, because uh, the, the safe uh, events are not concerned in this one, 
you will not uh, include this one in your calculations. So how do you calculate for your second barrier, which is the dispersion prevention barrier? So for dispersion prevention barrier, I know that uh, my near misses are five. And my rest of uh, the events, which are classified as the failure events for the, that event, it will be three plus one plus zero, which turns out to be four. And in order to using the same uh, formula, what I can find out, it is uh, four over five plus four. That's what uh, will give you 0 0.4444. So the point that I want to highlight here is when you are calculating for your dispersion prevention barrier, we will eliminate the safe event because they are not related uh, to that barrier. Folks, is this clear? Okay, we have a question. Yogesh asked me, sorry, I think I missed that. So we are why we are considering the safe event as abnormal events. Now, this is a good question you asked me. Safe event uh, means the operation was normal. Some abnormalities happen, but we return to our safe event again. It did not cause uh, any loss uh, of the material or the energy. So we need to include that event in our calculations because it did have the potential to convert into either near misses, mishap or incident or it could cause, have ca cause the accident as well. So that's why we include our safe events into considerations. If you are taking the reliability course, we will also study some reliability in this course. That data is uh, very important in our reliability work as well. Now let's go to the next uh, one, which is the ignition prevention barrier. Let me choose a different color. Now, once I, I want to find out uh, for ignition prevention barrier, so in my next step, I will skip my near misses even. So for ignition prevention barrier, How many mishap I have? I have three miss. So this will be gone. This is already gone here for my ignition prevention barrier. So how many mishap I have here? Which is three. And what is the failure of, of this barrier? It will bring me one plus zero. And using the same formula, if I want to find out its uh, probability, so that will turn out to be 1 over 3 plus 1, which is uh, 0 0.25. That's what is your number. That's how your number is coming out. In terms of the, my last barrier, the likelihood uh, failure probability, it will be now once I want to do this barrier, again I will eliminate uh, my mishap as well. So what is left here? My incident numbers one and my accident number zero. So for escalation prevention barrier, we have uh, our events here, which is uh, zero. So that's the only one left here. And in actual success was the incident which is one so i want to find out my probability or the likelihood uh, probability of uh, my escalation prevention barrier so that turns out to be zero over one plus zero which is zero 
And that's how you get this number here. Folks, is that clear? So the same procedure you apply on each and every barrier for all the months and then you find out uh, these uh, probability values. If you're using Microsoft Excel, this can make your life much easier rather than you do them by hand, which is up to you. So, so far we have the likelihood probability available. In the next step is we need to find out what is our posterior failure probability. So this was the initial probability that we calculated previously, 0 0.0498. Let me take you back and show you where this was. This is my initial probability. I want to update this probability based on the new information available. And then I apply my Bayes theorem, which is uh, the denominator term was to find out the probability of the data given that uh, release prevention barrier multiplied by the probability of the release prevention barrier, initial one. And then you add up uh, your uh, complementary function, which will be one minus the probability of the data given that uh, probability of the release prevention barrier multiplied by one minus probability of your release prevention barriers. So 0 0.6 times uh, 0 0.0498 plus the complement function of these, which is 1 minus 0 0.6 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.0498. You get your probability values here. So once we calculate these and using our probability uh, base theorem, we find out it is 0 0.072885. And this is what uh, will provide you your posterior failure probabilities. Once I do have these uh, probability values again, so using my event tree diagram one more time, I can easily find out uh, the probabilities of my success, of my safe events, probability of my near misses, uh, probability of the mishap, uh, probability of incident and accident. And that what uh, brings the last step uh, of this method. Here you can see that uh, this is the probability of my safe event, near miss, mishap, incident. Folks, as your home study, you need to study these uh, two articles. I will make them available for you on D2L to save your time. The first part is a theoretical part. It explains what the model is about and some basic concepts and it will also help you you to get answer of most of your questions and the second part is uh, calculation based uh, with a case study i would strongly advise you to go through the lecture first before you jump into studying that paper because if you are doing safety and risk engineering very first time it might be difficult for you to digest those papers so the easiest and simplest way is uh, look at the lectures, do your calculations by hand one more time as you have done during the lecture and then read uh, that study material. So that will be a fantastic thing for you. Folks, do you have any questions? Uh, this is the end of our lecture. Do you have any questions? And I'm happy to answer them.